Let's talk about asthma. What is it? It's a chronic inflammatory reactive respiratory disorder. So as far as the causes of asthma, it's kind of poorly understood. What we do understand is that asthma is caused by a combination of genetics and environment. So let's talk about the risk factors, the etiologies, the pathophysiology, the key manifestations, and then our nursing assessments that we're going to focus on. So we know that by and large, asthma is diagnosed in childhood. And a lot of those children diagnosed with asthma will go on to live asthma-free adult lives, which is great. Um, but we're going to talk about the patients that develop into the chronic, you know, asthma that we see. We're going to talk about what we're going to see in those patients and then what, how we need to assess those patients. Um, so first of all, risk factors. Being an African-American is a risk factor. Being a premature infant is a risk factor. Um, having a family history of asthma, of any type of allergy, eczema, hay fever, risk factor. And living within the inner city, you know, where there's more pollution, there's a higher population, there's more irritants, um, risk factor. So you can see there that there is a combination of genetics and environments as far as the development or diagnosis of asthma. So let's talk about the etiology. So there is a predisposition in patients with asthma to IgE mediated responses to triggers. We know IgE is that immunoglobulin that plays a big part in type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. So I break down the triggers into irritants and allergens. And there are a wide range of triggers in patients with asthma. So as far as irritants, think of things like cigarette smoke. Um, think of things like cold air. Um, Exercise-induced asthma. Medications like NSAIDs, aspirin, beta blockers. Those can all trigger an asthma attack. Because we know that asthma is characterized by acute attacks and then periods of, you know, being okay. Um, so when we're talking about being triggered, what we're referring to is things that trigger an asthma attack, all right? So that's some of the irritants, and by and large, those can be avoided. Um, there's also allergen-related triggers um, or allergen-induced triggers. And that's, you know, things like pollen, um, chemicals, you know, household chemicals that we clean the house with, pet dander, things like that. So again, breaking them down into irritant-induced triggers and allergen-induced triggers. So as far as the pathophysiology of an asthma attack, so we know that there's exposure to a trigger, either an irritant or an allergen, I'm also going to throw in there an antigen because a respiratory infection can absolutely trigger an asthma attack in someone with asthma. So <clears throat> the cells at play here are mast cells and lymphocytes. So the trigger calls out the mast cells and the lymphocytes to, to go kick into action. And then our inflammatory response is officially set off, okay? So what's going to happen now that the inflammatory response is set into motion is those cytokines are going to start stirring things up as well as histamine is going to be produced. Remember that histamine, again, is one of those chemical mediators that plays a huge part in type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. So once all that kicks off, because... Asthma is characterized by overreactiveness. It is a reactive airway disease. Um, those chemicals, that inflammatory response is going to trigger three pathophysiological processes that are responsible for the signs and symptoms we see during an acute asthma attack. Make sure you write these down. The three pathophysiological processes that we're going to see are 
airway inflammation, airway edema, and bronchoconstriction. All right, so those three processes combine and lead to a reversible airway obstruction. All right, so that's the pathophysiology. What are we gonna see as far as our key manifestations? Obviously a cough, wheezing, which indicates, hey, the airway is starting to close up, dyspnea, tachypnea as the attack progresses, and then hypoxemia and respiratory acidosis in like a more severe prolonged asthma attack, which is really, really scary, all right? So as far as our nursing assessments, what are we gonna focus on? Obviously respiratory rate, quality, effort. Are they using accessory muscles to breathe? Are they leaned over in the tripod position trying to get their breath? Um, we're gonna listen to those breath sounds. We're gonna check oxygen saturation. We're gonna look at something called peak flow. Peak flow is something that's monitored in patients with asthma. And it's basically just measuring like a quick exhale, like one quick puff. Um, how much air can the patient get out with one quick puff? And the peak flow measurements are part of every asthma patient's like game plan or whatever. Um, so we're going to look at peak flow during an attack to kind of give us a gauge on the severity of the attack. Obviously, heart rate and blood pressure because airway, breathing, circulation. We're going to look at level of consciousness because if and when level of consciousness begins to change, that's going to indicate to us severe hypoxemia and or respiratory acidosis, which means really severe asthma attack is happening. Um, we're going to look at skin color and mucous membranes for cyanosis, right? We don't want to see that. Cyanosis is a very late sign. Um, so hopefully we're going to correct this with bronchodilators, um, with anti-muscarinics, with all those medications before we ever see cyanosis. All right, so I, but I still have to mention it. So how is asthma diagnosed? It's diagnosed with something called spirometry. And spirometry is not the same as peak flow. Spirometry is much more in depth. It's going to measure um, a forceful exhalation over time. And so that is kind of the gold standard of what we use to diagnose asthma, whereas peak flow is kind of what we use to gauge the severity of an asthma attack. And also we're going to watch ABGs, right? When, when someone comes in um, that's having an asthma attack. We want to make sure that oxygenation and ventilation are um, not worsening as far as progressing to a respiratory acidosis. All right, so that kind of sums up asthma, the etiology, the patho, those three main pathophysiological processes that you need to commit to memory, and then some of our key nursing assessments. I really hope this video has helped and happy studying and go Vols!